feeling that someone's dumped half the herbaceous border on my plate. That fish needs a sauce. I, try, I wanted to try it before we had the sauce. It's, um, it's an intro. I wonder what it is. It looks like eel. I think it's, it's, um, it's very, very white. I don't like the fish. I think... It's a bit tasteless. The first problem you have is if you're going to choose a fish like this in a competition like this, you need to be very sure-footed about it. That fish is, in my opinion, uh, a, a mistaken choice. The reason why they cod and sea bass and all these other things are in short supply is actually taste of something. I think one of the problems with it is that the rest of the dish is so highly flavoured. It's packed full of fresh, flavourless flavour. <laughs> flavourless. <laughs> what is that flavour in that? Ginseng. Funnily enough, I, I'm not sure I like that sauce because the broad beans have got such a lovely flavour. No, I thought it worked very well with the broad beans. The broad beans can have a very, very musky flavour. Um, and I think that it just subdues them. This is a very politically correct dish. The, there's no fat in it, it's totally um, good for you, and it's a bit too Actually, worthy. Actually, Prue, I, I'm 100% agree with you. I'm all for healthy food. It's just for other people, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I suppose there's going to be no chance of clotted cream for the pudding, then, is there? <laughs> this could spell danger for Chris. Are the judges beginning to tire of his health-conscious cooking already? But now it's time for Elisha's fish course. And he isn't bothered whether his food's healthy as long as it tastes good. He's chosen turbot topped with cured local venison ham, accompanied by rich brown shrimp and langoustine dumplings with both fennel confit and puree. Well, turbot then? is a very robust fish that can cope with meat and it doesn't lose its flavour. There's not really nothing really unusual about turbot, is there? There's no. like restaurants up and down the country using turbot, but there's not many using ling. In fact, I can't name one using ling apart from mine. What, you're the only person using ling? But turbot is on like virtually every menu, even on pubs up and down the country. Mind you, he doesn't know that the judges think there's a good reason why people don't use ling. Across the counter, Elisha's using tomato ketchup to spice up his turbot sauce. Predictably, Chris is absolutely appalled. Only place for that. But Elisha's too busy plating up to notice. First on is the fennel puree, followed by the confit. He then carefully places the turbot and venison ham, the dumplings, and finally, his special turbot sauce. Bring it up to them, like that to them, OK? I'm really, really excited. Thank you. Happy? I'm, oh, I'm excited. Yes, come on! So Elisha's obviously very pleased with this dish. Let's see what the judges think. I can't be honest with you. I'm, lo I'm looking at this dish and it's making me depressed. I don't think it's much of a look at this dish. Mm, Actually, it's it quite nice. It lovely. It does taste mm. good. Underneath the hammy crust or whatever it is, mm -hmm. there's um, red lemon or something. It's delicious. I think that meat and fish combination works well. I think the fish is well cooked. The puree, the seafood and the fennel are very nice together. I think, actually, the only element I think there's too much of is uh, the little prawn balls. So because I just think that... I mean, they're OK, but I just don't think they, they, they fit with the dish. I actually think if we just had these balls as a dish, I'd be quite happy. Say, four of those on a, on a oh. bed of that sauce. I mean, I would have thought that was a thoroughly modern affair. I, I mean, sure sorry. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. The one thing I think that doesn't work are these Richard balls, which are, you know, they're sort of fishy gobstoppers. Mm. They're very nice, too. Well, I, I think this dish could be seen at the Gherkin if it had some more balls. I think, actually, this dish could be seen at the Gherkin if it had no balls at all.